Hey, Bass Geek here, and today we're talking tips, tricks, and hacks for topwater walking baits. Hey guys, before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed and you haven't clicked the little bell beside the subscribe button, please make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when the videos are coming out. That notification bell is super important. Subscribing is important, but the notification bell is super important so that you guys will see the notifications and be able to come and watch when these videos come out. Almost like clockwork, 5 p.m. Eastern, Sunday, and Wednesday. Sometimes I'll be a day late. I'll make sure I post and let you know on my other social medias. If you're not following me on Facebook, Bass Geek Fishing on Facebook, Bass Geek Fishing on Instagram, and Bass Geek Fishing on Twitter. Make sure you go follow those too. Now, I do want to give some shout outs. Number one, you see the shirt. Thanks for sending me the shirt. Aurelia, Aurelia Fishing. Sorry, I'm, I always have a little uh, trouble pronunciating that. I'm, you know, country boy redneck down here. So, you know, just how it is. But listen, guys, he's up in Canada, does a lot of different styles of fishing. Like him, real good guy. Make sure you go check him out. Somebody else that I want to give a shout out to, one of my good buddies, a guy who I've become uh, friends with, not just uh, YouTube friends with, but Debo's Fishing, guys. Make sure you go check out Debo. I'm sure most of you already know about him. Uh, his channel's growing like uh, like a wildfire. It's incredible what he does over there, especially you bank anglers. Make sure you go check him out. And then, of course, we've got one of my very good friends, Mr. Tackle Junkie 81. Make sure you go check Tackle Junkie out. He does a lot of of you know product reviews uh unboxings he does you know some fishing he's kind of like this channel does a little bit of everything debo's the same way does a little bit of everything so uh we're all three kind of teaming up with each other make sure you go support all three of these channels i appreciate it all right so somebody asked me in the buzzbait video you know that they'd like to see a video where it really talks about tips and tricks and kind of hacks that I do to a buzz bait. You know, I really got to thinking about it and, you know, I've not really done sort of a, a bait hack style videos. And it's because really, I never really thought about, I, I never really thought I did much in the way of, you know, kind of tweaking my baits out. And I was out on the boat with one of my buddies, Jeremy, during the uh, big swim bait video that we did. And he kind of pointed out that really I don't seem to ever fish a bait straight out of the box and that I actually do, whether they're just small hacks, kind of like you're going to see in this video, to bigger hacks and more of an alteration to some of the baits. I actually seem to do quite a bit to alter the bait straight out of the package. And so between the question I got in the buzzbait video and my buddy jeremy i think i'm going to go ahead and, and start doing some of them be short and sweet i'm going to try and put as much info as i can but just some bait hacks stuff that i do that really i don't even think about okay so let's start right out by talking about the baits the specific brands now i'm going to just cover some like like maybe four or five brands there's so many out there so many companies make good good top water walking baits that it's ridiculous so i'm just going to cover some of the ones i've used and some of the ones that i tend to go to you know one of my one of the very first go-to baits for me is absolutely the spook and the reason why head makes such a diverse range you've got the regular czar spook you've got the rattling czar, czar spook you've got the one knocker you've got the spook junior you got the chugging so it's so diverse and there's so many different colors that you can do a whole lot to get started with just that one bait and they're priced extremely well. Now, some of the others are the Strike King Sexy Dogs. You know, the Sexy Dogs are probably 
my second favorite out there. Again, priced good. They come in a couple of different sizes, three different sizes, I believe. And they come with a rattling and a one knocker. And that one knocker plays a big role with me during the summer. The other, I actually discovered this way back, way back when I was uh, not even doing YouTube. I actually had a subscription that my wife got me to Mystery Tackle Box. And so this is one of the baits, an old head. Again, I, I stress this to you guys. This is one of the baits that I actually discovered through Mystery Tackle Box way back before I was ever doing or even contemplated ever doing way before there was ever a Bass Geek. And this is the Ima walking baits. What I like about them is that they're a thinner profile. They're a smaller bait. Now, there's two different sizes. There's the Ima, and then I think it's like the Magnum Ima or something. I don't know. But anyway, so there's two different sizes in them. And I really like the smaller one based on, you know, bait fish and maybe how much chop you have on the water. The very next, and I think this is huge, huge when they're really corralling bait fish. You're out there fishing for them. They're busting shad. And that is Livingston. Livingston makes several different types of of walking baits and they've all got the uh, little micro processor in there that creates sound bait fish fleeing sound i'm telling you guys don't sleep on livingston especially in the top water category uh this is their bigger version they have a smaller version of this uh it's called the walking boss so make sure you go check out the livingston group of topwaters they have caught me some very very nice bass and they've got some great colors last but not least probably one of everyone's favorites is the lucky craft sammies how can you go wrong with a lucky craft of any type in any of their bait lineups but the sammies are great and those are kind of my go-to's right there kind of my four or five go-to baits that i pick up on the regular just so you know, I'll put links in the description to all my favorite baits, uh, rods, reel, line, the whole setup. So if you decide to go out and check them out, they'll be in the description. Links there, follow them, go check them out. The next thing I want to talk to you about when it comes to walking baits is sound. When, where, and why you need certain sounds. And the very first thing I want to talk to you about is kind of the chugging walking baits. Now chugging walking baits are really most of the time when I'm gonna use those is when I really need a disturbance. When we've got kind of a medium chop on the water, something that's really gonna spit, sputter. You know, I'm gonna stay away from those in dead slick, super clear water, but a chop is when I'm gonna really use those, those type of baits just to throw me a little extra spit and sound out there. Or when I'm around some heavier cover. Now, rattling baits, you know, I'm going to use a rattling bait, especially, you know, one that doesn't have a cupped bill. I'm going to use that in slick to uh, clear water to a little bit of chop. A little bit of chop, a good loud rattle is going to help out a lot. The one knockers, the one knockers, seem to work great when it is dead slick calm in that medium sort of depth ranges. So when you need to call them up from a little bit deeper, but that dead slick calm, that's when a one knocker really seems to shine for. Now let's talk about a silent walking bait, something that's not gonna spit a lot. Guys, I'm gonna use it real shallow when I'm not working it around a lot of cover. I'm gonna use it when I'm on those slower tapering banks so that I can walk it farther out. Something that's going to, probably gonna to downsize too, something that's not gonna make a big splash when it enters the water. It's gonna kind of sneak up on those fish. Now let's cover sizes and I'll give you a few reasons and a few places to downsize to the small baits. The small baits, a lot of times when it's calmer water, when it's shallower water, clearer water 
and they're focused on smaller bait fish. That's when I really go down to like those spook juniors, those smaller sammies, those smaller uh, sexy dogs, your smaller, more subtle baits. Now, I say smaller and subtler, but sometimes, especially if they're keyed in on that small bait fish, I may want, you know, a little louder bait, something that's got a little more rattle to it, or even the chug, if we've got a little extra cover or a little chop on the water. Now let's talk about your medium size, basically your standard bait size, basically your heading spook, your one knocker, your standard Sammies, your standard sexy dogs. Those are generally my go-to. It's the first thing I'm going to pick up. Now, if they're keying in on smaller bait fish, I may pick one up because I'm looking for a bigger bite. You may have a lot of smaller bass keying in on that small bait fish, and you'll have some bigger bass that are just waiting for that bigger meal. So if they're chasing those shad, sometimes I'll go to this to try and get a bigger bite. The other times I like this is over deeper water, slightly more chop. So those are gonna be the times that I'm going to look at these larger baits, the mid-size standard baits. They're really gonna be my go-to, my starting point, 90% of the situations that I'm fishing a topwater walking bait. Let's talk about the megas. So the mega sexy dog, the magnum big walking baits. Now those are generally when I'm going to be fishing around large, large mouth. Maybe a little deeper water out on the ends of points, a little more chop. So if I'm calling up even some small mouth and some big spots off those deep tapering points, I'm going to want a bigger bait especially if we've got some chop or some overcast, you know, something that's gonna break up the size of that bait and gonna pull those fish. I'm gonna use that to pull those fish up out of that deeper water or when they're keying in on those big, big bait fish. Now let's talk about colors on these walking baits. A go-to, a staple is the bone color. Now bone generally, I'm gonna use it partly cloudy days, you know, even high skies at times if I'm around some grass, you know, this is a good solid color. So I'll even use it to cloudy days, but it's still quite bright outside. Um, I'll use it from dead slick to a, a light chop generally is when I'll use it, especially if it's not a, a you know, a, a cupped walking bait so that's the time i'm really going to pull out this bone color bone tends to be one of my go-to top two colors let's go to the other spectrum and let's talk about black now black is going to be the bait that i'm going to use in super low light so early in the morning when they're biting and the sun isn't all the way up heavy cloudy days or rainy days. If it is raining, pull out a black walking bait. You will be amazed. Even up to heavy chop. It could be a high sun day and you're getting some pretty good chop. You know, enough where you can still stay on your spots because we all know that once, you know, top water kind of blows out at a certain level of chop on the water. But when you start getting to that, pull out a black and start using it, you'll actually get a lot more bites, even on those sunny, windy days. Next is gonna be chrome. Chrome, I'm gonna to tend to wanna to use in a little more stained water, something where that flash is really gonna matter from slick to uh, chop on those high viz, high sunny days. So that chrome, I really want that bait to flash as it moves side to side. Last but not least, and my favorite, are the translucents. Guys, you have seen a ton of videos where I've been on Top Secret Lake P, and I mean putting giants in the water over deep, clear water. And I'm talking about 25, 35 foot of water on these little creek channel ledges. It is amazing 
in super clear water, dead slick situations, how the translucent baits will pull these bass up. I like them in shallower water, shallow clear water. Translucent is going to be for that slick time, very little chop to dead slick calm in clear water. So now let's talk about hacks. So let's get into the part that I know you guys are super interested in. The three hacks that I'm going to recommend, number one, now this isn't for the top waters. I, my top waters are, I, well, I can't find my crank wraps for my top waters right now. But crank wraps, number one, if you want to change the uh, color. So let's say you bought some colors you didn't, uh, you decided that that color just really isn't working for you. They crank wraps, and I'm not sponsored by this company. I'm a huge fan of them. Use them on my spoons all the time. Uh, not affiliated with them in any way, but the crank wraps actually can change the color. They make a ton of top water colors that are really impressive. Very natural looking top waters to some very bright colors in the top waters. So the very first thing you can do is actually hack the color of your top water. Now you can you can do that simply with those or you can do it with some paint pens that you can buy off Amazon. Something else that I do. The very next hack is gonna be the knot. So split ring or loop knot. Now, I did a loop knot video a while back. So make sure you go check that out, how I tie a non-slip loop knot. And that's something that I use on a lot of different baits. From jerk baits, uh, anything that's got a darting action, I tend to start using a loop knot instead of the split rings that come on some of these baits. Now, I will say you will get a much wider action. So if you've got a bait and you want to get that bait to uh, a nice tight walking action, but moving toward you, you may want to stay with a split ring if you're going to walk that bait extremely fast. Uh, a loop knot is going to give you a huge, just wide side to side action. And we'll talk about action and, and retrieves here in just a minute. Right now, the hacks, so that hack, you know, I love a loop knot. Again, when I'm fishing over deeper water, when I'm fishing uh, clearer water, or when Let's say I'm throwing this in the post spawn, which is coming up, and I don't want the bait coming back to me that fast. I'm fishing a stop and go action, and I'm fishing around what I think might be or areas I might think there's either bedders or fry guarding bass. That nice, wide, slower action will stay in place a little better than working it super fast. Last but not least, we're going to talk about hooks, and this is probably the widest range of hacks that you can do on a top water walking bait. I just about hooked myself right there. So when it comes to top water walking baits, the most obvious, some baits come with them, some don't, but I do like a feather treble. Now, let me say, if you put a feather on your bait, it will restrict the distance of the side to side glide. So there are times it creates drag in the water. So it will actually cause the bait, much like if it was weighted on the back, to more move instead of that glide motion. It will cause it, it'll still, you know, the feather's not going to restrict it, but it will restrict how much movement it has side to side. Now, the other two hacks involved like this is a three hook bait if uh, if i was using this bait i would want to put it here hence why the red gills are painted in because that creates a target along with the red eyes on that bait the same here the dot actually is ahead of the front hook that actually creates a target for the fish to hit so the other thing is i'm going to put a red hook on my bait, on the front, not the back, on the front. I'm gonna put a red hook that gives the fish another target in that shallow water. Something else you can do, and this is something that you guys, and, and man, when we go into my 
top water or my swim bait hacks, that's going to be a long one. But this is something that I've been doing on my underspins is swapping the blade out with a treble hook. And this is one of the VMC bladed trebles. And so that's something else you can do is you can actually put one here and you can put one there. Now the blades on these are, are a little small and you can tell that's a good size hook. So it's not gonna create as much drag, but it will again restrict the amount of glide. So if you're working it faster, those hook tips or tricks, hacks, whatever, uh, you might want to use it more in that area as opposed to the times when you're gonna really want that bait to have a wide gliding action. So the very next thing is when you replace your hooks on a walking bait. So something that you wanna pay close attention to is time of year, okay? Now on a walking bait, the one thing I don't ever recommend is putting the tipped in, the EWGs or whatever grip they are. I don't ever recommend, unless you're around a lot of heavy cover. If you're fishing this over barely submergent grass, then maybe you want to do that. I always recommend a round bend on a topwater walking bait. And I'm gonna tell you a little difference and a little secret. There's always exceptions, but here's something you wanna think about when it comes to crankbaits, you know, maybe stuff that you're gonna fish around a lot of heavy, heavy cover, like a square bill, go with the EWG, the kind of tipped in points, as opposed to the round bend points. Anybody that's fished for crappy can tell you they call them paper mouse, and during the summer, those mouths get really, really soft. So you're always better fishing with something that's a round bend in the summer because these will tend to tear bigger holes in the fish's mouth. The EWGs will tear a bigger hole, and it's easier for them to get free when the fish's mouths are softer. And that happens in bass, too. As we get into the summer, you know, everything warms up. The blood's flowing more in these fish. They're cold-blooded creatures. So this is going to sink in deeper. It's going to really grip. It's going to get a hold of them and, and not let them go. This, most of the time, isn't going to penetrate as deep. So what you end up with was, is a lot of hooks in them, but they're, e they're easier to tear free. So that's a little, trip, a little tip, a little hack on all your hooks. I like a round bend as we get into the meat of the summer when the fish's mouths start getting softer. And, you know, as we're in fall and spring, I tend to go more on any bait to those EWGs. Seems like we hold on to them a little bit better. All right, guys, let's talk about retrieves. Now, this is a hack that I've learned, and if you've watched any of my fishing videos, especially my topwater videos, you will have noticed that some of the best days I have on topwater walking baits isn't when I'm just burning that bait. Seems like every guy that picks up a topwater walking bait, as they get used to it, the faster they want to fish it. And that's not always the case. So there's really three retrieves that I use 90% of the time. Number one is the fast retrieve. Now, these aren't in order of how often I use them. It's about dead equal, to be honest. The fast retrieve. Guys, I'm gonna use a fast retrieve almost always when I'm around smallmouth or probably spots. Something where they're chasing bait fish and they are super, super active. I mean, they are just coming after it. That's when I'm gonna use it. Or largemouth. If largemouth have shad cornered and they're just in that mood to where you know, they're not doty doing around because largemouth tend to be like me, fat and lazy. But if they're in that mood where they're chasing, then throw it out there and work the far out of it. Now, the second retrieve is a stop and go. So this is kind of a middle ground retrieve. We can talk about fast and slow stop and go. So stop and go can be a lot of times when they're chasing those shad or when I'm around 
a great time again postpone fry garden bass or you know i'm fishing around lightly submergent grass or heavy cover and i can throw this in there and i can twitch 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 pause twitch 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 pause I'm, i want it to stay in an area a little bit longer i'm going to use that stop and go action now i may if i'm in open water and again they're chasing i may want it to look like a bait fish that's fleeing quickly and just twitch twitch twitch, twitch and pause so just a real quick but if i'm fishing shallower a lot of times i'm going to fish that twitch 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 pause i'm going to fish it a little slower now one of my favorite when they're out deep and we're fishing clear water is that slow as you go constant retrieve and i mean you can see it in the videos literally I am working that bait so it has gotten to the apex on the right and to the apex on the left. And it's almost a pause, but not quite. As soon as I see it slow down and almost come to a stop, I twitch it again and it comes back. For largemouth, they seem, and especially the big largemouth, they seem to love that retrieve because it gives them time to come up look at the bait you're not running that bait past them a big large mouth is going to start to come up when they see that bait coming across and as it goes past they're going to go back down they're looking for an easy meal they're not necessarily chasing and that's why i've caught so many big bass on walking baits over clear deep water okay guys as always you know protect your rods with TRC rod covers again links in the description to all of this also so the very first thing I want to tell you this is my spiral guide and guys I will tell you it's a little stiffer so you're gonna you know probably not going to be able to use the uh, the smaller like the spook juniors on it but it casts the standard size walking baits extremely well. Now this is a lose LFS. I like the six, eight to one speed. I can go up to a seven, but six, eight to one for me, because I got a bad habit of turn, turning the handle too fast, keeps me from pulling that slack out of the line. And walking baits is all about slack. Now, I would recommend line doing, doing it two different ways. Either have straight braid if you're fishing dirtier water, straight braid to, let's say, a five-foot leader. You know, even a three-foot leader would be fine. Some guys go one foot. I'm a little, there's a lot of shock between the knot, but not as much as like fluorocarbon to braid. I use, and I spool straight uh, monofilament. And I would use monofilament to braid if I was going to use a leader. That gives you a little more shock. This stretches much, much better. Okay. So generally, I'm going to throw 14, 15 pound mono braid. I'm probably going to throw something in that 20, 30, maybe even 40 pound test area. Uh, just a good size, good floating size. But uh, that's what I'm going to throw. This is the JB Customs. Uh, spiral guides they're it's it's an awesome rod guys so far i'm really enjoying it and i will do a full review on this rod as the season goes on but like i said this is a lose uh lfs six eight to one and i have 14 pound monofilament again all the links will be in the description below now the other rod oh and this is a medium fast action sorry about left that out okay guys so again cover your rods with those crc covers make sure you go pick those up 10 percent down there blah 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 in the description now guys this is a rod that i actually picked up and and i put i don't know it, it had to be close to 20 pounds uh last year if you go look uh top water over a 30 foot ledge that video and that day was a fun fun day this is actually a piscifun torrent it's a medium fast action also both of these are seven foot rods by the way but i'm waiting on my reel i'm putting a tournament mp on this again six eight to one 
But this has a little more tip. It's a little softer, so I can actually cast those smaller uh, Spook Juniors with this rod. Uh, really do like this rod. Again, there'll be links in the description. Really, really do like this rod. <clears throat> like I said, I'm putting a tournament MP on this rod. This rod is probably my all around walking bait rod right now. And again, I will spool it up. I will back it with some cheap braid. And for me, it will be straight monofilament, 14 to 15 pound test. Low vis green generally is what I'm throwing because, well, again, if you've seen the water, we have this kind of green tint to the water where I fish. And I will use the loop knot 99% of the time. All right. So that is that for your topwater tips, tricks, and hacks. I hope this helps you guys. We can go, I, listen, this is one of my favorite baits in the world to throw, and I can go in not so deep. I mean, just crazy deep on, you know, the different baits and walking action, and we may do a more advanced on the actual brands and types that each brand make and where they work best later on. But right now, I feel like this gives you a good when, where, why to use these baits. And uh, you should, you absolutely should use these baits. It's one of the most exciting bites you'll ever get on. All right. As always, guys, questions and comments in the comment section below. You guys know I love to talk fishing with you. I love answering your questions. I answer every single stinking comment. They don't stink. I love you guys. Anyway, like it if you like it. Make sure you ring that tag on bell so you know when these are coming out. And then go watch them for me. It helps. And you guys rock.